नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध नमो तस् भगवतो अर्हतो सम्मा संबुद्ध welcome all today i am going to read asutta it is sn 22.95 lump of foam so this sutta is really interesting because the examples uh, given in this sutta are really relatable uh, tathagat the buddha invokes a series of different similes different examples to illustrate the emptiness or the wideness of five aggregates so will i am i'm going to start this sutta at one time the buddha was staying near ayodhya on the bank of ganga river the buddha addressed the mendicants students suppose this ganga river was carrying along a big lump of foam here the lump of foam is nothing but uh, mostly air there is only an extremely thin layer on outer surface of the lump of foam the lump of foam. Uh, it's basically like uh, the soap bubbles and a person with clear eyes would see it and contemplate it examining it carefully and it would appear to them as completely void hollow and insubstantial there is nothing inside insubstantial for what substance could there be in a lump of foam in the same way a student sees and contemplates any kind of form at all past future or present internal or external rough or fine inferior or superior near or far examining it carefully and it appears to them as completely void hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in form so five aggregates means uh, this roop body sensation perception means sanya mental formations means sankhara and consciousness so the buddha is talking about this five aggregates and wideness so the example is uh, given here suppose it was the time of autumn when rain was falling heavily and a bubble on the water forms and pops right away and a person with clear eyes would see it and contemplate it examining it carefully and it would appear to them as completely void hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in a water bubble so the example of water bubble is given here and in the same way a student sees and contemplates any kind of feeling sensation vedana examining it carefully and it appears to them as completely void hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in feeling 
suppose that in the last month of summer at noon a shimmering mirage appears and a person with clear eyes would see it and contemplate it examining it carefully and it would appear to them as completely void hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in a mirage in the same way a practitioner or the person who is able to six r all the formations he could see it contemplates any kind of perception at all now the perception is uh, nothing but uh, it's we call it sanya or the thing which name the things like it is red it is black so in this way examining it carefully and it appears to them as completely white hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in the perception suppose there was a person in need of hardwood uh, hardwood is uh, basically uh, it's a solid dense part of uh, at the center of any tree it's very solid and dense part wandering in search of hardwood they would take a sharp axe and enter a forest there they would see a big banana tree straight and young and grown free of defects they would cut it down at the base cut off the top and unroll the coil sheets but they would not even find sapwood much less hardwood and a person with clear eyes would see it and contemplate it examining it carefully and it would appear to them as completely white hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in a banana tree i think everyone is not uh, aware about the banana tree and its root so we can take an example of onion so when uh, if you want, if if you like want to find out the real onion we just keep peeling every layer so we just keep peeling it but we will not get any onion inside it so this is also the relatable example there in the same way a practitioner sees and contemplates any kind of choices at all examining them carefully and they appear to them completely white hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in choices suppose a magician or their apprentice was to perform a magic trick at the crossroads and a person with clear insight would see it and contemplate it examining it carefully and it would appear to them as completely void hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in a magic trick so there are different magic tricks uh, so this is only a kind of illusion uh, i think uh, bhante uh, the bhante who wrote that book concept and reality uh, he has also written a book on the same topic i, I don't remember his name now but it is regarding to the magic tricks and or like how illusion is there so in the same way a student sees and contemplates any kind of consciousness at all past future or present internal or external rough or fine inferior or superior near or far examining it carefully and it appears to them as completely white hollow and insubstantial for what substance could there be in consciousness
seeing this a uh, learn learned noble disciple grows disillusioned with form feeling perception choices and consciousness being dis disillusioned desires fade away when desires fades away they are freed when they are freed they know they are freed they understand there is no return to any state of existence that is what the buddha said then the holy one the teacher went on to say so uh, stanza or it's like a poem so these are the examples uh, given by the buddha for emptiness form is like a lump of foam feeling is like a bubble perception seems like a mirage choices like a banana tree and consciousness like a magic trick so taught the kinsman of the sun so i think these are the adjectives used for the buddha however you contemplate them examining them carefully they are void and hollow when you look at them closely concerning this body he of vast wisdom has taught that when their things are given up you will see this form discarded so three things basically discarded vitality warmth and consciousness when they leave the body it lies there tossed aside food for others mindless such a is the process this illusion food over by fools it's said to be a killer for no substance is found there an energetic student an energetic mendicant should examine the aggregates like this with situational awareness and mindfulness whether by day or by night they should give up all yoking and make a refuge for themselves they should live as though their head was on fire aspiring to the imperishable state that is nibbana yes that's it this was a very short sutta but now we can discuss if anyone have any kind of uh, question or doubt we can discuss Sindhu, would you would you like to say something on this sutta? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, the way the Buddha has given the examples here for the five aggregates uh, regarding this, uh, the sutta also covers like the three characteristics of existence for the form, for the feeling that all these things are impermanent, suffering, yes. and non-self. Nonsense. and every time we grasp on to them then we cause ourselves suffering that exactly like this the whole process of uh, grasp greedy causes suffering yes and it's very good uh, for people who are beginning the process when they grasp on they can like just uh, recollect back such is the form this form is like a 
lump of foam and if they are looking at feeling and if they are personalizing it then they can see it as a bubble uh, it just pops up and there is nothing left they can see nothing the inside yes Paul, you are also very attentive. So, would you like to share your experience about this, Sutta? Sorry, I've got nothing to add, really. It's a nice Sutta, but I've got no insights, I'm afraid. Okay. Yes, Sachinji. Yes, Shubham. Yes, Shubham. Could you able to hear me? Yes, yes, you audible now. Yes, actually, I did not hear the Sutta from starting, uh, but the impermanent, as Sindhu said, it is uh, impermanent. Like even the states, the stages of uh, meditation which we experience, it is also an impermanent. In this context, I would like to say that uh, to all that uh, we should begin the meditation as a beginner mind. When the yes. Even though even though we are practicing swim, we should sit like a beginner's mind and. Uh, should always uh, be in a state of mind where uh, our body is in a relaxed, our mind is in a relaxed state. Uh, whenever uh, there is a tightness or tension arises in our mind and body, we should uh, relax it. Exactly. exactly. Like recently, I have listened to the Dhamma talk of uh, Delson. Mm. Where, uh, Delson was saying like... Uh, we need to get relaxed in the sense uh, our whole body, our whole muscles get relaxed. We should be in that state uh, where Delson was saying, like uh, for normal people, one may work for a long, day long and uh, after finishing work, he just relaxes in by sitting. In that way, in similar way, one needs to get relaxed. Agreed, right. I so thought to the to state of relaxed or the prasamdhyam yes. used in this practice is really helpful. Yes. Uh, and yeah. one more experience I would like to say here is like uh, whatever the activities you perform, you can add some pause in it. Like let okay. us say you are walking from one place to another. You can, uh, like, even if you are speaking to someone else, you can take a little pause, little pause in the sense, a momentary pause to add loving kindness to it. Okay. And, uh, I thank Good. everyone who have participated. And wish thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Shubham. Thank yeah. you Thank all. Thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Yes. So we'll share the merits and we'll stop here. Me suffering once be suffering free and the fear stuck fearless be. Me the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation. So, 
थैंक यू सो मच फॉर कमिंग थैंक यू थैंक यू थैंक यू एवरीवन